All right, hey there. Another episode of What's Brian Up To? Well, today I'm over at my parents' house and I'm gonna help my dad work on his 1995 GL 1500 Honda Goldwing trike. Uh, today we are working on replacing the brake pads, checking the calipers. All right, here's the bike. And as maybe you recall in other videos, we've worked on replacing the LCD screen. And another episode, we replaced the front tire. So go ahead and check those out. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It really helps the channel. All right, let's do it. So the first step is to go ahead and jack up the front to get that front tire up. And this is a trike, uh, which is a little bit sturdier, but if it was a motorcycle, we'd, when we jack it up, we wanna make sure we secure it so that it can't be tipped over. All right. Today we're using an ATV jack. This helps stabilize the bike. Makes it a little easier. So next we're gonna remove the fender trim covers. And when you're doing this, remember to pull carefully uh, outward. And that disengages the tab from the grommet. Then we remove the upper cover bolt and it secures the brake hose retainer. So then the next step is to remove the two bolts at the bottom of the ring of fire and these are both eight millimeter. In the last video, uh, we didn't have the screw, and so we used one we found, and it actually is a Phillips head. All right, and then the same on the left side, removing the cover and the screws, and the screws of the ring of fire. All eight millimeter. Taking care with the wires on the ring of fire. And a good idea to set that on a towel or a rag. All right, next step is to loosen the calipers. This top Allen is a six millimeter and the bottom is a five millimeter. Set that aside carefully. Again, repeat on the other side.
if the caliper doesn't come off, what he's doing is trying to compress the piston slightly just to help it get off that disc. Yeah, perfect. Setting it aside carefully. So now that we got the calipers off, we want to go ahead and inspect the discs for any damage, cracking, glazing. This side looks pretty good. Side seems to look pretty good. And while we're here, we're going to want to hit this with an emery cloth, some sandpaper, something. Uh, it's, it, since we don't see much uh, or any damage here, we just want to rough it up a little bit, kind of remove a little bit of that glazing if there is any. So. Notice how he has the sandpaper bent over so he's getting the back side and the front side at the same time. Then the left side, now the same with the right side. All right, so we take these caps off for the pads. We put these back up in the bike to get these pad screws out so we can get some more leverage. They recommend doing this before you take them out of the bike. Okay, now that we got those loose, take the caliper back out. screws that help hold the pads in. Just let a little gook on or something. Our pads should just come right out. This is a backing plate for that one side. There we go. Do a quick inspection on the calipers. Same thing on the left side. Pad screw caps off. And we're gonna use the five millimeter. Unscrew the pad screws. Take that caliper off. And the pads fall right out. Quick inspection on the calipers. Here's an up close and personal. Comparison of the brake pads. These are the old ones from the left side. These are the old ones from the right side. And you can see the difference for sure. Definitely time to change them. Next step is remove the caps from the reservoirs. This is the front brake reservoir. And we're going to remove some fluid so that when we push the calipers in, 
it's going to push fluid back up in the system, and we're going to try and prevent this from overflowing. Right down here is for the rear reservoir, which is going to be for the other side of the brakes up front. Go. Yep. All right. So we're able to unscrew this with a little screwdriver gently. Take that cap off. Super handy spot, and done. All right. You want a flashlight? No, we'll be okay. Go ahead and pull a little of that fluid out of there. Oh yeah, that's, I think you're golden. Yeah. Oh yeah. You, you're down to the bottom. I sucked it all the way out. Mm-hmm. Now we gotta push the caliper back. So we put the pad back in. We're also gonna watch this reservoir here to make sure it doesn't overflow. So if we're unable to push this in with thumb pressure, it recommends to try using a pry bar. And if the caliper sticks, they recommend overhauling the caliper. Push your fluid in the thing. Yep, a little bit. Yep, it is. So everybody can see. Yeah. Probably there. Yeah, they got on fluid. Let's see how far. Yep, they go flush, just like that. Okay. Same process on the other side, but this should affect that rear brake. Reservoir. Pushing that down in there. Beautiful flush. And just a little bit of fluid in the reservoir. Let's start installing the pads. I want to remember when we put these back together, the one side gets that uh, backing. Steel. Backing, yeah, backer. So we place the new pads in there. We get the pad screws through there. This orange is kind of a, a little glue to help. It's, it's, it's per preference, and it's to help minimize any kind of squealing or squeaks for the future. We'll want to screw those pad screws back in, but wait to torque them until the caliper and bracket are installed on the bike. Seen it. Yep. All right. Six millimeter at the top. That's what we
And notice how clean these forks are. In another video, go out and find that. We rebuilt these forks. This down here is the anti-dive unit, the lower and upper, outer and inner fork tubes, all new seals, bushings. They used to leak and spew oil out of here. And when you hit the brakes, the whole front of the bike would just dive. So they had no support. Um, and so go find that other video. Learn how to rebuild your forks. Okay, top bracket bolt for the calipers. The, the six millimeter is gonna be torqued to 17 foot-pounds. Okay, <clears throat> do that on each side. Okay, and the bottom one, which is on this bike connected to an anti-dive system, which is right there. That's going to be torqued to nine foot-pounds. And the other side. Okay. And the pad pin screws get torqued to 13 foot pounds. And we just install the pad pin caps. Again, pad pin caps on the left side. Okay. So then we just want to top off the brake fluid reservoirs. I think it goes to that line right there. the rear brake fluid should be above the lower mark it must be the lower mark right there that's what i think too yep. and that's the full mark yep there you go there so full now I think now you're at the upper mark. Okay. All right. 
Now it went down. All right. Here, see if the front tire stops spinning. Okay. Ready, go. Yep, for sure it does. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. So we're in between the lower and the upper. That's what we need to be. Yep. Next step is to install the ring of fire back on, being careful of the wires. And we have two screws at the bottom, one's an eight millimeter. They should both be eight millimeters, but one's a Phillips on ours. Brackets. All right, making sure that bracket is hooked on the back side while you're screwing it in. And then let's have the plastic cover. Hooks in the front there, presses in the back. Hang on. There you Ta-da!